Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. So let's open the hood and find out what this is all about. So two things we have to talk about today, specifically are right down in this area here. There's two things that I'm gonna show you right now, what they're all about and why these are upgraded. So the first thing we'll talk about is this nice shiny pipe in here, you'll see this. This here is your charge pipe. Now the factory comes out, the factory N54 engine comes with a sort of a corrugated plastic pipe. And it's no secret as when you look down the long list of problem areas in the N54 engine, which this is, that pipe is the problem. This one here is now made up, it's an aftermarket synapse pipe with the appropriate connectors on both ends. So you basically just bolt it right in. You've got your flexi hoses on either end and you've got this nice mandrel bent solid pipe here that effectively will never lose pressure, will never lose boost because the original pipe way back when they put the N54 in, no secret, BMW loves the use of plastic as you can see plastic everywhere. But down there was no different. This corrugated pipe was somewhat maybe partially flexible, but it had a real propensity to actually split. Even under stock boost settings, a lot of cars that were left stock over time would eventually just dry out, crack, split, and you'd lose boost. Well, what does loss of boost mean? That means reduced power, reduced fuel economy, and overall poor performance. Not what you're looking for. In a turbo engine, you need to have everything sealed tight so you can build a positive manifold pressure. That's how you get your power. If you don't have that pressure, it's gone. It's no good to you. Now you also have to consider when you're modifying an engine like we're going to do here where we're gonna tune this up and I wanna push a lot more than factory pressure, that's even bigger an issue. So those cars that might've been on the cusp with that corrugated hose that didn't fail will now definitely have a problem that, that will force the failure for sure, no questions asked. So that pipe is a must change, absolute must change. Even as a stock format, even for the stock car, that's a must change. Definitely if you're doing upgrades, you're adding more boost to this engine, absolute almost mandatory to change this to a solid pipe like this one. I happen to have the Synapse version, but there's a few other versions out there as well that you can dip into. Now most turbo cars nowadays have systems in place to protect themselves. You don't over pressure the intake system. And of course you have either a recirculation valve or often in this case, a blow off valve, which is typically, this is aftermarket, but in most cases they have a recirculation valve because most manufacturers would rather recirculate the charge pressure, the excess charge pressure back into the intake. And when it does that, these recirculation valves often put that charge air when you're lifting the throttle between shifts you create this extra pressure because the closed throttle plate that pressure goes back it has to go somewhere and so it usually wants to go back towards the turbo and try to stall out the turbo if you don't have this valve when they put these valves in place these recirculation valves what that usually means is when you're accelerating the valve is wide open and boost goes all the way through the system when you lift the throttle the, the bypass valve now recirculates it to the backside of the mass airflow, but to the front end of the turbo inlet. Right in that section is where it redirects that pressure. So it has a, a way to dissipate it. So you have to get rid of that energy somehow. Now with a blow off valve, it does something very similar. When you're accelerating, the valve is closed, adding all pressure to the engine. When you left off the throttle, like when you're doing a shift, you're going for second gear, you left off the throttle. What that is doing now, instead of recirculating it back to the downside of the mass airflow, instead what it's doing is it's exhausting it to the atmosphere. So you hear that whistling noise. These, these little guys right here, these blow off valves are known for their whistling sound effects and their hisses and their, their pops and all that kind of fun stuff. Depending on the brand, they all sound a little different, mainly because of their construction and their makeup. But in essence, the discharge or the ex exit part of those valves create a specific unique sound and you really can't miss it when you're driving next to one of these cars. So it's a very tuner specific sound. Tuners love the sound. I love the sound. It sounds great for sure for a kind of a hot, hotted up turbo car, unique only for turbos. So you're getting rid of the excess pressure in between. The intent is to maximize the efficiency between throttle response and lifting off and, uh, and applying throttle. It improves efficiency in theory. 
This one, Synapse, has a good reputation for that. So it, it really does a great job of throttle, improving your throttle response. So you have less laggy back and forth. Because what happens is if you don't control that extra pressure on a throttle lift, what happens is that pressure goes back to the turbo. The turbo often can stall. Or at the very least, the impulse of charge pressure comes back and takes a real beating and takes a toll on the impellers, the bearings, and everything else that goes back towards the turbo. So it doesn't do your turbochargers any favors. Let's put it that way. That's a big reason why you need either a bypass or a blow off valve. So I'll give you a little demonstration here. Accelerating, the valve is closed. So you hear it whistle. It's whistling when you're lifting off the gas. So in between shifting, that's when it's releasing the pressure because otherwise, you have an overpressure of the intake system. So what happens is, as you're accelerating, the valve is open, wide open on the blow-up valve, which allows full boost. And then when you lift off on the throttle, the blow-up valve actually closes to prevent back pressure. Now there's some things you have to know. It's a great tuner device. It sounds great, and honestly, you know, HKS has a really loud blow-up valve available. Synapse, which I have in this car, is one of the better sounding ones. It's pretty loud for the most part. Then you have TL or Tile, however you want to call that. They're actually a really well-made device. I've got experience with TL waste gates. They make a really good product there with you know, fully customizable spring, spring settings and whatnot. So a really high quality product. There's a lot of great products out there, but these blow valves really intended for tuners especially. Now the Synapse is rated for really good throttle response. It has a really good response to throttle on and off and it's actually rated as, as a pretty good device. Let's put it that way. Now the downside with these devices, any of them that vent to atmosphere, such as this Synapse or the Tile, TL or any of those other ones, if they vent to atmosphere, you're sort of limited. You're not actually allowed to race in FIA regulated events because the obvious release to atmosphere, you're actually not allowed to release this pressure, the sound, this noise to atmosphere in these events. So if you're going to race it, you have to confine it to a recirc valve. You have to put the pressure back into the intake. So you put it after the mass airflow and before the inlet to the turbo. So it has to go re-inject into that line somewhere, somewhere in that system. Like I said, after mass air, before the turbo, you have to re-inject if you're gonna recirculate. If you're not recirculating and you want the noise, you vent the atmosphere with a blow-off valve. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end. Of course, as always, don't forget to drop your comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say or further opinions to what we talked about today as well. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like of course, and most importantly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. At the end of all of this, just remember the key ingredients Life's too short to drive a boring car. See you then. Bye-bye.